Um, I was going to say, there was this Insta model that I was following, like, from, I don't know how long ago, some random, right? Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, this week or last week, wipes the account, changes the name of the account to Haley's Free. All right, I don't know what her original account was. The right under a photo just says, I love Jesus, with, like, a crucifix and a heart. Oh, of course it does. Another one. Yeah. And then, mm, mm. dude. The Another one bites the nut. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on. I'll read you the thing. This, this is what killed me. Hang on. The first post she put up, is this it? Haley is free. Uh, or maybe she's already changed it. Shit. Really? I think she's already changed it. Haley's not free. <laughs> Haley's <laughs> gone. Um, Haley's free. Where'd she go? Come on. She can't have gone already. Um, yeah, the first post was. A picture of her and her, her husband, and it says, oh, my husband and I have been on this, on OnlyFans for like the last three years, blah, 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 but we've now seen the light. Oh, here we go. We're a married couple who's been doing OnlyFans for the past two years. <laughs> We've recently decided to surrender our lives to Jesus Christ and quit. We don't regret the journey at all. We will share our full testimony soon on a podcast. I hope everyone can respect that decision. We're not for more free, right? Sure. Dude, like four days later, one of the stories comes up. Thomas Update. He has pseudomyogenic hemoglobin theolema. He'll be losing his leg below the knee in a few weeks. Prayers are so appreciated. His spirit is super high right now, and we're fully trusting in the Lord and his plan. And they were spooking their podcast. Do you reckon that's a tactical conversion? That is tactical conversion. <sighs> that is very tactical <laughs> conversion. <laughs> yeah. In five days, no oh, one's watching I MPT love, porn. I, I'm, ser- I'm thinking about it, but I just love the, the, the new label of tactical conversion. I love that. That's That has to be like... No, like seriously. That has to become like a... What do you call it? Like a main... What do you call it? Like a mainline thing that has to, ju- has to be used everywhere. <laughs> like no, no. Tacti- <laughs> tactical... <laughs> Legit. Dude, like, okay, cool. You just found the Lord. And then yeah. like a week later... Maybe uh, it's just bad timing. It- I don't know. But, but they fucked That's up. That's where people usually find religion in, in bad times. Well, I mean... <laughs> come on, man. <laughs> tactically found religion. Seriously. But there's a market for amputee porn. They really messed up. <laughs> I'm sure you're well up to date. <laughs> they probably would have made more money with amputee porn than, you know... Well, the year is still young. A double-legged guy. <laughs> You're such a dickhead. I can only think of that Seinfeld line about George reading the penthouse forum. It like, seems like an enormous number of people in this country having sex with amputees. <laughs> <laughs> You're such a dickhead. Speaking of Seinfeld. I was about to say. You did- both missed out. Yeah, I know. I know why? I, know. I told you why. You didn't give me a reason. I said I'm. we're filming. I'm busy. You were filming. You had a camera. No, but you know you had the tripod. I can't. You leave were holding pe- the boom. I can't leave these people <laughs> on the boom. <laughs> the boom for a minute. Standing there in the midnight with a stick. You missed out. Action. No, nah, legit. <laughs> were you one of the guys that slapped that Palestine person in the back of the head? That was Sydney. Didn't it happen here too when you were here? It's happened at every. Show. They, they didn't do it. At, uh, it didn't happen at the show I went to at five o'clock at the six thirty. It did. Seriously, man. Why doesn't someone just drop kick him to the face? Yeah. Well, they. Oh. Have you seen Jerry's responses? Yeah, they're, they're pretty good. Class, like, yeah. all class. Like yeah. people are idiots. Like yeah. you're in the wrong. This is wrong a comedy place. show. You're yeah, paying yeah. me to. Yeah, you're yeah. paying another Jew to like make your point. You're not winning. Like, they, these people are just unhinged. Yeah, they just they don't know. Unhinged they just, is one word. <laughs> it's a nice way of saying it. <laughs> um, I told yeah. you I've got a solution for the whole area. Area of what? What Palestinian protesters? No, the area Middle of East. Palestine. Yeah. What's your What's your solution? <laughs> this is where we're going to get first of all let's, let's stop using the word solution <laughs> to start let's to start a, is, it a way is it a conclusion get away from I think solution. it's a fairly good conclusion okay. it's, it's, it, it involves a very high uh, death rate <laughs> <laughs> well not necessarily if they choose to be there they they can right they can move along right um, a who's very, they Everyone. Yeah, everyone. Everyone. Just everyone. Just, just, we'll just sell it once or for all. the area. Just, just, scorched just, earth. Just, in a, just in a 2K radius of, uh, you know, uh, Rafa. Do you remember um, the Scorched Earth? No. You don't remember Oh, it? hold on. You? It was no, a it precursor to Worms. No. Oh, oh I do. I was watching It something. was Worms Scorched Earth, wasn't it? No, 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 no. I was watching a DOS YouTube video on, like, the, the top 50 games from, like, you know, mm. the 90s mm. DOS era. 
And Scorched Earth was one of the first ones they mentioned. I'm like, oh, I literally jumped off my couch. Scorched Earth, I used to play with my neighbor on like a 386. Mm. Literally like side profile like worms. Mm. Little tanks that just get dropped in from the ceiling. And then you're just using different types of yeah, cluster yeah. bombs mm. and machine mm. guns and whatever. Worms are so good. Well, mm. Worms would never have existed without Scorched Earth. Yeah, yeah. Scorched Earth was so much better because it was yeah. like tanks. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah, so the they- solution, please. Oh, just turn the whole area to glass. Glass? Yeah. How? Well, what happens when you raise the heat on sand? Yeah, all right, it turns to glass. Yeah, so turn the whole area to glass. How much heat would you need? Well, what what would be substantial enough to create that amount of heat? Across how many kilometres of kind of nuclear Multiples. device? <laughs> Possibly that or so cluster bomb. So you're going to drop cluster bombs. Sure. I'll take the hit for humanity. Just napalm the whole place. I'll go to jail for it. It'll it'll finalize it. And, know, what, and, and what does that solve exactly? Well, if there's no area I'm of sure. Palestine, there's nothing to complain about, is there? Oh, so we're raising the whole ground. So we're yeah. scorching the earth. Sure, in Gaza, it's been done in the past. It's it's it works. So you ask, Carthage me. no longer exists, does it? Wait, wait, wait. <clears throat> so let's just let's just be clear for for the listeners and maybe the fanatics out there. Sure, you are saying to destroy Palestine. The area of Palestine, yes. Okay. But that's not to wipe out Palestinians. It's just I didn't say Palestinians, every- no. That's just to wipe out anyone that's there. If they choose to stay there, that's their problem. <laughs> it's like if you choose <laughs> you to know, eat Indian, you run the risk of having diarrhea. We're laughing at this, right? Like, yeah, whatever, idiot, right? But in like six months, one day, man, you'll be standing there like, <laughs> we've gone for a coffee. Oh, let me just get the paper. And we just stand there like at the radio thing. And all of a sudden, you see a... <laughs> air sirens... John's voice comes over. You've been warned. There's a six, 90 seconds to evacuate the air. What? <laughs> what? 60. <laughs> 30. Please <laughs> just trying to figure it out. <laughs> this guy. 15. Flies, this guy in a chocolate just flies over. Hey. <laughs> what? <laughs> so you want to come along? <laughs> <laughs> we got scammers. I know, you wouldn't have told us either. No. We've just done it. Yeah. You're an idiot. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. That's not. You can't just raise the earth. Sure you can. <laughs> it's been done throughout all of human history. Okay. <laughs> He's like, just He's fighting a hard now. We're going to create a sea of flames. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to burn. Burn it all from the ground. <laughs> so hot that Cyprus can feel it. <laughs> You're fucked. Sure. <laughs> I like, I like this. I like this version of John. We need to bring this out more. I think it's the donut. I think it was <laughs> too, too many sprinkles. <laughs> Way sugar. too many sprinkles. It's the sugar man. He's fluctuating. <laughs> the sprinkles are embers. Back on Seinfeld for fuck's sake. Okay, yeah, Seinfeld. Uh, the show went for yeah. He had his opening act, which went for about ten minutes or whatever. It was good. The opening act was basically a sixty-year-old black version of Jerry. Right? <laughs> oh, yeah, nice. it was. It was really good. Jerry comes out, like, just jogging out as soon as the other dude walks off. Like, he just jogs out straight into it. Um, I given I have, I have grew up watching his stand-up, memorizing it, and his delivery and all that sort of shit. 2024 version of Jerry is like Jerry on Coke. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. Animated. Wow. This, it's, and watching it and hearing his delivery and all that sort of stuff- mm. He's really gone George Carlin esque. Really, mm, still nice. observational, but really dark, and just has given up on society. Yeah, yeah. all his material was about like just ending it. Like, <laughs> what is the point? We've failed as a society. Oh. There is no point. Mm. He's like, he's, he did this whole thing where he laid layers and layers of jokes on AI. Like, we were smart enough to create AI, to, like for dumb people, like to make us feel stupid. Like, it was just this whole link. The one thing that I was, like, when I was watching it was I was giggling, at least giggling through the whole thing. Mm. As in, he came out running out, and I was giggling from that point to laughter to oh, the end. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. And um, watching it, you can tell why he's, like, just, he never he never riffs. Mm. He's on point, on material the entire time. Mm-hmm. And I thought about who I've seen in the last, say, 24 months. I've seen Louis C.K., I've seen Chappelle. Oh, did you see Louis C.K.? Yeah. How was, it? How was he? Eh. Not as good as he used to be. Had his funny bits. A mm. lot of it was reworn stuff. Um, and uh, Andrew Schultz, I saw him. Who else did I see? There's one more that I'm missing. I can't remember who. Nevertheless, 
I didn't laugh the way I laughed through Seinfeld's one. Mm. Damn. I'm glad I actually saw it. Mm. Like, oh, that's good. Nah. He's, you idiots should have been there. Like, honestly, if you both appreciate Seinfeld, like, to oh, yeah. high levels, mm. you needed to see it, man. Yeah. Like, 100%. I, I knew I was going to miss out. Yeah, of course. Like, big time. I knew it was going to be the case. Yeah. Yeah. Seriously? It was, it, dude, it was an hour and a half. Hmm. Hour and a half. What time was it? Six. Six. Yeah. Five. No, five I was there. Hmm. Five I was ushered in and the show started at like 5.15. Was it packed, obviously? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was packed. It was surprisingly quiet, though. There were no, like, protesters or anything outside the front. And then I noticed, yeah, the second show had some clown arguing. There's been pretty much almost every show, other than probably yours. That's what I was going to say. Yes. Michael Richards' book. Okay. A mate of mine sent me a link to his autobiography for like mm. 40 bucks, right? Could you accept Michael Richards' stuff back in the fold after the Laugh Factory incident? Sure. Absolutely. Yeah? Yeah. How do you justify it? I, I, don't, I don't need to justify anything to anyone. Yeah. No, I'm just asking. It's like, you know, the, the whole... Uh, can you listen to R. Kelly's music after the whole... R. I still Kelly watch thing? Bill Cosby stand-up. Yeah? Yeah. I didn't find Bill Cosby that funny. I like this stuff. Yeah, I wasn't a big fan of Cosby, but I think that if you found something funny then, it still holds up, regardless of what they are now. You reckon? Yeah. If it's funny, yeah. I'm not disagreeing. I'm just asking. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Because, um, what's it called? Yeah, the Michael Richards thing, obviously. I bought a copy of the book. I actually want to read it. Um... Yeah, someone had said to me years ago when I, I showed him my M&M tat, he said, I don't know if I could ever get a tat of like someone like that random. I'm like, what do you mean? He said, I don't know, what if they turned out to be like a serial pedophile or something, blah, blah, blah. I go, yeah, but I, go, I got the tat of like the album because that meant something to me at a specific era, blah, 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 blah. Like, do you know what I mean? It doesn't well, change. there you go. You answered. Yeah, yeah you're it on doesn't the change page. the catalog. Yeah. Okay, you, okay, you're likely to get a family member put on your body and chances are you're going to have a falling out with them before you get yeah. it. Falling out with a celebrity you've never met. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Maybe that family member diddled a kid. <laughs> I, I don't get his face. <laughs> he's, just, he's just straight into it, isn't he? <laughs> I'm sick of all these what ifs. I mean, I'm not a fan of Houdini, then you. Like, it's whatever. But I like his. I love his alt shit still. Houdini? Oh, the yeah. new Eminem track. Mm. I'm not a fan of it. Yeah. I get, I get the nostalgia of it. Yeah, yeah I get yeah. the purpose of it, but oh. it's... It doesn't captivate me, like... I, I listen to three quarters of it without skipping through it. Yeah. And then I just let it go. Mm. Who knows what the new album's going to be like. Yeah. I get what he's doing. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I'm an old Eminem fan, not a new Eminem exactly. fan. Exactly. Same. Yeah. I don't know. That's just me. But you wouldn't stop listening to the old stuff just because you don't like the new stuff. Nah. I actually no, exactly. went back to the old stuff. Do you know good it is? <laughs> exactly, yeah. It's right it holds up, man. what you loved, yeah. 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 I don't know. It's like Fred Durst. <laughs> Did you see Fred Durst, like, lately? Yeah. He's, like, full dad. I think I linked it in the- Is still around? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I linked it in the chat. Really? Mm. Wow. Yeah. They were playing live. They play live. He was in that sex tape, like, 20 years ago. I don't need to know that. (laughs) Do you know who just released a- a Is he married to Sandra Bullock? Who? Who? Is he married to Sandra Bullock? No. No. Yeah, I'm positive he was. No, no, no. Sandra Bullock? Yeah. No. No, I'm, I'm pretty I'm, sure he no. was. Your finger is not on the pulse of this community, man. I'm pretty sure. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Sandra Bullock. No! No! I'll be amazed if he's right, though. If he's right. If, oh, because I don't remember that I at all. I will eat my words. Maybe it was another metal dude. I don't know. I mean, you wouldn't. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on. Sandra, Sandra Bullock. Of all the references, too. Yeah, his algorithms out there. No, hang on. Sandra Bullock. Where'd you find Sandra Bullock? You might as well just now. Because I remember she was married to a dude with like tats and all that, and he was like a band dude, and I'm pretty sure it was Fred Durst, unless it was another guy. Public image, personal life. Here we go. Uh, Private jet crash, blah, blah, blah. She survived the jet crash. Won a million dollar judgment, multi million dollar judgment. Just get to spouse. (laughs) Spouse (laughs) slash is. Okay. So she was once engaged to Tate Donovan, who I have no idea who that is. Nope. Uh, mm. She was dated football player Troy Aikman and actors Matthew McConaughey and Ryan Gosling. She then married motorcycle builder and monster garage host Jesse James. Oh, maybe it was that dude. Jeez. Jesse, wasn't, what? Je- wasn't Jesse James a porn star that died not long ago? I guess they spell the name similar. Uh, and then, hang on, James entered into a custody battle with James' second ex-wife, former adult film actress, Jeanette Linda Mulder. Oh, there you go. Okay. There's a link there. Uh 
several women claimed to have affairs with James during his marriage to Bullock, so she cancelled her European promotional appearances in 2010, uh, responded to the rumours, yes, blah, 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 blah. Divorce was finalised in 2010. Remember, is this Jesse James, dude? I'm not seeing... Well, maybe it's just, just Jesse James. It looks like him. Fred Durst. The Durst man. <laughs> it's close. It's Durst close. <laughs> I just... You know how sometimes I get to see some stupid videos that pop up and it's just like some black dude listening to metal for the first time mm. in his life and it's like a reactionary video. I don't know why I get that. And it's like he's... First time I listened to white music, and there was like um, System of a Down, mm. and there was Corn, and all the you know the stuff from the the two thousands, and um, Limp Biscuit was on there. I was like, man, I can't listen to this stuff again. <laughs> Why not? I can't listen to Limp Biscuit anymore. I've tried, but I can't. I can listen to their uh, significant other album, the second one. Okay, yeah, Chocolate Starfish has aged, aged badly. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> The music in Chocolate Starfish is actually good. It's his lyrics that mm. just don't. Yeah. It's just, it's Fred Durst. It's era, man. We were mm. 16. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, it did get me back into listening back to Audio Slave again. I haven't listened to that for years. Audio Slave, I felt, was just like a, it's like, okay. It's the a- first album was uh, very Rage, like yeah. Rage Against a Machine, and then the second and third came into their own. Is worth listening to? I liked it. But it's. it's- much. Starts off. Excuse me, Demetrius. <laughs> oh, oh, what do you mean, man? Am I not the one that uh, introduced oh, you go. to here infected mushroom? No. Yes. No. I believe I was. No. We have you on audio here saying that. No. I said that you listened to infected no. mushroom. I didn't say that. I oh, believe I introduced you no. to Buckethead. Is, is an Israeli guy. An Israeli guy I went to audio engineering school with introduced me. I used to love wrong. <laughs> Sorry? Psycho. Psycho? Infect- infected Mushroom, yeah. Oh. It's like the only song I ever listened to. Okay. I don't know. If I hear it, I'll be able to tell you what it is. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, so what? You so, take credit for that. Yes. Such a bum, man. Thank what you. God. And don't forget it. <laughs> You're fucked. Legit. I don't know, man. Whatever. Um, new business, man. New business. New business. The hell? Do you like it? Oh, I got a comment. I made a chili for dinner. And my mates commented, Do you like it, Scott? I call it Mr. and Mrs. Dinner and Chili. <laughs> that was dark. <laughs> that was probably single handedly the darkest moment. On I think South that was Park. a turning point in South Park, yeah. Was yeah. it? Yeah, I think so. Because that was pretty early on, too. Yeah. Season four? No, I wouldn't say season four. Wasn't it? No. No, 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 no. I feel like that's when they kind of started. Could they be- always pushed it, but I feel like that's when they really- more than six. After that, that's when they kind of just went- Yeah. So they just five, started doing whatever five, they wanted. Yeah. Shit, you're right. They mm. started doing whatever they wanted after that. Air yeah. date 2001, July yeah. 11th. Like, literally yeah. 20, 23 years ago. Yeah. Do you reckon South Park's on the way out as well? I haven't watched any of it, it for it years. Is, it is. I think that the, the last season or two went real weird. Like, they were trying to change a lot. As in, bring it up to speed with everything. And then I think now, from what I've seen, is they're kind of going back to the roots. Well, I think that's the thing. Like Simpsons and like South Park, they're there for entertainment. They're not there about being right or, you know, uh, role models or trying to be politically correct. They were, they was, they were twisted shows mm. and they were there for laughs. Do you know what it is that I've noticed is shows live within their own stories, within their own yeah. show. And then at some point they'd run out of ideas yep. and they bring it into today's world with today's politics and today's problems and they grab real people and they throw them into their stories and then everything just goes shit. That's a hundred percent scrubs. Yeah, it's hundred yeah, percent Simpsons did that when they started getting all the celebrities coming yeah. out. Mm. They never did. Yeah. If you think back to the first say ten net se- um, ten seasons, they never had Every episode had a cameo centered around a celebrity, ever. Yeah. And even if the celebrity was in it, they never played themselves. They, they rarely yeah, played themselves. Yeah, exactly. Tom Jones played it himself. <laughs> With a snake one. <laughs> Hello, Marge. <laughs> That's it. Big smile. Everybody's But happy. see, it wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't anything to do really with him. He was just fitting into yeah. their it world. It got him to entice Marge to go out on a date with Burns. <laughs> <laughs> 
gun in his back. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, mate, I don't do private parties. Well, then perhaps you should look at this, Richard. <laughs> okay, but I don't see the... Uh, he just gets gas. <laughs> um, Did Tom Jones die? No, he's alive. Come on, I think... Oh, uh, Sean Connery. Sean Connery died like three years ago. Yeah, yeah but I'm just, ago. Yeah, yeah, I'm just... One's yeah. Scottish, one's Welsh. One's a singer, one's an actor. What are you talking about? Black, white. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Donald Sutherland passed away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's mm-hmm. actually a whole list. I was looking at the in memoriam uh, sort of thing. Got me sad. Mm. Um, what was I going to say? Simpsons. Sure. Did you ever listen to any more of that Harry Shearer footage of Mr. Burns? Yeah, that was enough for me. At that point, oh, and the woman that plays Marge in the Spanish versions of the show, she died. Like this week. Okay. Isn't that enough to pull the pin? Okay, Harry Shearer sounds like shit. Mm. Yeah, but that's... I can do a better Burns than he can. Yeah. Like, I... Confidently. The question is, do you think the show is still funny and it warrants the air? Or no. do you think it's oh, no. it's running on nostalgia and fumes? Mm-hmm. The first one. And the kids now watch it because it's The Simpsons. Yeah, but what kids now watch it? None of the kids I know under, like, 12 watch yeah. The Simpsons. It it also doesn't have any lasting memories of the sh- of the episodes. Like if you if we talk about it, we can refer back to things. Yeah, you watch the new seasons. I've you had can't a, refer yeah, to yeah. I've had a couple mates who are much younger, and they've sent me some clips of Simpsons. You know how I've been going to town on the the, the clips lately with Simpsons. Like I just found this. Oh, I'm loving it, and so they started sending some too. But these are clearly like new episodes that I've never seen, yeah. and I'm watching this. I'm like, this is not funny. This is just like yeah, thirty so- second bites. I'm like, this isn't funny at all. Okay, there's no comedy. But think about like this, yeah. With I Dream of Jeannie, mm-hmm. you had Dick Sergeant and and then um, Dick York and Sergeant, whatever his name is. Yeah, they swapped the husbands over. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they recast the role. And they were what a season or two in. Yeah, they, yeah. So the character had been established. They recast it, and it was still well received. I don't see why they can't. They've done it for other characters already. Could they redid Carl? Yeah, but. Carl was a secondary character. But he's got an iconic voice. But he, he wasn't in enough episodes moving well, forward. Burns is... Come on, Burns is Burns. But he's not a main character. He's a secondary character too. Just because Carl he's been around be, for 30 years, yeah. Carl would be a third then. He wouldn't be a secondary. He'd be a third or fourth. Well, if you can get someone to do the voice, why not? If you can get people... They, oh, they do it with Warner Brothers or like Bugs Bunny and all them. They've changed the actors, the voices. Are they still making Bugs Bunny cut-ins? I think so. Surely not. I have no idea. Really? I don't know. I, I, I don't know. know. Rec- I know the guy that did the majority of them, like the son took over and then someone else took over that. But if you can get someone, why not? See, so, would you be happy to recast like Burns? If you can get the exact same voice, the, sure. Dude. And there, if it's still warranted. There are people do impressions that can get Burns 100%. Then why not? Sure. But you have to have the content to warrant it. It has to be funny. It has to. You have to. You have to have good stuff there. I think the reality is you lose whatever attachment or re- like that relationship you've built with that character. You lose that regardless. You bring in a new person, regardless of how close this, the voice is going to be. That little inconsistency that might come through. I think you're just not going to get the same effect. People sure. will just drop off at that point. Yeah. Would you be okay with them doing the Rambo prequel that they were talking about? They want to recast. Obviously, Stallone's not going to do it. Um, they want to cast. Uh, they want to do a prequel on First Blood, explaining St- uh, John Rambo's like finishing high school, going into the army, going to Vietnam, getting scarred, and all that sort of stuff. Would you build a relationship with that character? Probably not. No, I don't think so. Yeah, I think so. All right. It would it- depend on who it is. That's the problem. Because you build your relationship with his character exactly. in the last scenes of the first one. Yeah. Because that's when you realise this dude's got PTSD and he's just a, a shell. Nothing is over. Nothing is over. <laughs> and my friend is everywhere and he's not making him out. <laughs> <laughs> we used to scream that, man. There's so many house parties back in the day. It's over. Nothing is over. <laughs> Nothing. But that's where you get that connection there in yeah. those final 10 minutes. Nah, that, I got it, the connection from well before. You're telling me that's the most powerful scene in the movie. One of the most powerful scenes, uh, look, I reckon. It is pow- it's a nice way to finish yeah. the movie. Because everything you think is like this dude just trying to mind his own business and the cops are the assholes. 
But then it's like, but there's something deeper here. And then you finally get it in those last 10 minutes. Mm. Okay. But what about, what was the, the Sopranos prequel? What was that called? Uh, um, I keep forgetting. Uh, yeah. Newark? Yeah. Something Angels Newark? of Newark or something Some like, that? like that. Yeah. But did you watch it? I watched it. What yeah. did you think? Eh. It was okay. It gave you context, yeah. but like, could you get attached to Gandalf, the Gandolfini son that was playing, obviously, young Tony Soprano? Yeah, I did. I did because I think he was. If doing a- anything, that movie made me hate a specific character that I was like a beloved character. Junior, yeah. what did he do that was so bad in that? Well, he's just a prick, but. Well, the whole thing. What? Well, the whole end. I can't remember it. Well, he basi- I watched it at the movies. I don't remember it. Well, he basically kills- Spoiler alert. Yeah, spoilers. The movie ling, came ling, like ling. Yeah. Five. <laughs> no, it was like three years ago. Saints of Newark. Isn't Saints that what it's of called? Newark, yeah. Right. Saints of Newark. The many Saints of Newark. Yeah, the many, not the one. 2021. Three years ago. Okay. Okay. I think we've gone through- All right. Spoilers. Spoiler alert. Spoilers. So, what's his name, Uncle Junior? Uncle Junior. Oh, what is Uncle Junior's name? That's his name, isn't it? They could, I, I forgot. I haven't watched that Sopranos for ages now. It's uh, Uncle Junior, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, base, Huh? His brother. Who's brother? Tony Soprano's father's uncle. Uh, yeah, but brother. his name's Uncle Junior, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. He kills, he organizes a hit on Christopher's dad. Does he? Uncle. Uncle or dad? I honestly don't remember. I didn't watch it. It's his dad. Yeah, yeah, it's his dad because it's Tony Soprano's like, uh, um, like icon. You okay. know, he's trying to keep him out of the business. Yeah, and his death is what makes him go into it. Yeah, but basically, like everyone thought he was a junkie because he was bringing the pills to like Tony's mum, and then because he was killed, the pills were found next to him, and so he got this bad name that he was a junkie. Bad rap. Bad rap. But it was uh, Junior, uh, Junior that basically killed him because he, f- he laughed at him when he fell over, uh, like, in the rain, and he hurt his back. So, oh. as a revenge, he gets a hit put on this dude, and he kills him, and then that's, like, yeah. Mm. So, like, from a character that you, like, that was endearing to you, but you knew that was, like, you know, why ruthless. Was, yeah, but why did you find Uncle Ju- Junior endearing? He was such a conniving prick. I think it was just the way he was, because it's just the way he delivered stuff. I think it was more so the actor than the actual character. Okay. But it's just, yeah, like, after seeing that, it's like, well, because it never really went there. It, was, it didn't really go anywhere. That the power movie. of many. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't really go anywhere, I found. Like, it was just like this story that went along and it, mo- the Italian mob is not getting along with the black mob. Mm. And then, like, it just kind of culminates. <laughs> the black guy gets away. And then it's like, well, where is this going to end? you watch it? Once. And you remember it? Yeah. I watched it at the movies. I don't remember shit. If I watch something and it sticks with me, it sticks with me. If I watch it and I disregard it, it's gone from my mind. Can you name a movie in the last five years that stuck with you? No. I I can't. Good or bad? I've said this before. I've brought this up before. Good question, actually. Good or bad? I can't think of any. Oh, that many Saints of Newark. Um, I I don't really watch much movies anymore, to be honest. No, no, but like legitimately can't think of anything that I've seen. That's what I'm saying. Things don't stick anymore. Tripe. You know what? Was good. Tripe. You know, you know tripe. what was actually good? What's the that? final scene in um, Endgame, the final battle, like the build up of like fifty freaking Marvel. Yeah, movies. sure. Yeah. yeah, that still gets me. Like the you yeah. know Cap come in and then like the whole everyone the juice goes back to your balls, huh? Yeah, it does. No, no. I feel the juice rushing to my balls as Dude. we speak. Yeah, no, it we're, was. We're it was a culmination of, of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A culmination of it. The way they did it, yeah, I thought that was sure. impressive. Yeah. Considering the budget, considering- when, when was that? How many years was that? Five uh, years ago. Five? Yeah. Four years six. ago. Oh, okay. No, wait. Marvel in game. Mm. When was that? It feels like it's ages ago. It's all been downhill from then. It has <laughs> been downhill. Yeah. yeah. 2019. Five years. Oh, five years. Okay. Mm. Hang on. Well, that's five years already. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> five years. The whole thing took 10 years to put together and we've already gone five years past the point of the, mm. no return. We haven't had one memorable movie since. No. What are the Marvel movies that have come out since then? Remember, you used to hang out for them. Mm. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Black Panther, when Black Panther came out, I was actually looking forward to it. Mm. Yeah? Didn't see a sequel. It was um, terrible. Really? Was the first one good? 
Oh, sick. Oh, was it? Yeah. I haven't seen it. I didn't watch anything after Endgame because I was like, oh, it's finished now. Do you know why, man? Why is that? In all honesty, the ESG thing wasn't a factor five years No, it wasn't. Ago. No, no. It wasn't. That's probably why the sequel's terrible. Yeah, like, okay, it's it's an African nation, right? Yeah, like sure. black. Yeah. But it wasn't- In your it, face? It didn't feel like that's the only reason. Hmm. Like, Black yeah. Panther was already a character. The sequel yeah. makes it clear that it's in your face. Really? Yeah. It's in your face. Everywhere. I just never watched it because I watched Endgame. Like, I watched it, and I was like, all right, I get the story's finished now. That I just didn't watch because I wasn't watching every single Marvel movie that came out, and it was just one of the ones I did not watch. Mm. So I wasn't watching any Marvel movies except for the, the main Avenger ones, mm. and I made a point to go watch Black Panther because I thought it looked cool, mm-hmm. and it was. Yeah. Just the whole idea and, like, the backstory and all that sort of shit was pretty cool, and mm. it had some good actors in it. Yeah. Michael B. I Jordan saw- wasn't Superman yet, you know what I mean? So yeah. it was cool. Yeah. Oh, fair enough, yeah. But I didn't watch The Last Rocky. The the Creed. Creed 3 or whatever it was. I haven't seen any of them. It's terrible. Oh, really? Yeah. You could t- dude, some guy that he grew up with goes to prison, comes out, you're, you've taken my success, I should be where you are. Wasn't that- Oh, that's what it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Creed 1 was good. They tie off a lot of things. Creed 2 was just like- uh, Adrian's uh, Revenge? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Creed 2 was just garbage. And then oh, really? I don't even bother with 3. I find, so the actress that's in that Creed movie that plays the love interest. She's terrible. She, everything she touches <laughs> turns to sh- to crap. She was in the Thor movies. Was she? Yeah. She's like a Valkyrie. She was in Men in Black. Uh, Which Men in Black? The, yeah, the, the re-one, the re-did they did, yeah. Oh, Bad Boys. There's a new ba- the new bad. I thought that movie. already came out. It came out like a couple of weeks ago. No, I thought like a year ago or months ago. That's what I thought they too. Made, they made another one. So there's a second one. <laughs> Wait, so there's what do you mean? <laughs> yeah, that's what I was confused. What? As, what? Like he was. <laughs> no, <Nah>, man. <laughs> I thought the same. I thing. thought Will Smith said he wasn't acting anymore. <laughs> he should be sued. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was sitting at home. I YouTube, saw the ads. I thought that was just the one. YouTube trailers start coming up. It pops up. I was fired literally. So I went, whatever, man. Wait, so they made two in two years. <laughs> and yet, is that what we're saying? Hang on, I'll tell you now. Hang Martin on, Lawrence wait, wait, must wait. be reeling. He must really need the money. Hang on, yeah. Bad Boys. Bad Boys for Life came out in 2020. Bad Boys Ride or Die came out in 2024. Four no years. way it's been four years since that last one. Bad Boys for Life was 2020. No way. That feels like it was a year ago. I'm telling you. It was 2020. I'm in the same thought yeah. as you. <laughs> it has not been four years it since that last four one. Four years. That was like a year uh, ago, uh, not even six months ago. Hey, Bad Boys for Life was generally received well, made $426.5 million. Oh, crap. Became the third highest grossing January release of all time. Have I blacked out for like four years? Yes. Mm. Yes. Just Apparently so have I. <laughs> Part four got cancelled and then got put back in. There's uh, another Beverly Hills cult. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw, Straight um, to Netflix. I saw Eddie Murphy's interview about it. Oh, how, yeah? Yeah. I don't know. Any hope? I don't know. I, I saw one scene that they showed on um, uh, Seth Meyers' talk show or whatever. Well, it looked okay. It's a chase scene or whatever. More of the same shit. But I've got more hope in Eddie Murphy pulling something off than Will Smith and yeah. Martin Lawrence. Dude. I this- thought Martin uh, Will Smith resigned from the Actors Guild. Yeah, he did. He did. I thought he said he wasn't going to be acting anymore. No, no, no. Just because you resign from the Actors Guild doesn't mean that you can't act. It just means that your movies aren't up for contention. With for Academy oh, well. Awards and stuff. Which is why I thought he said he's not going to be acting anymore. I thought that was the whole point. What's the limit of, uh, what's the limit of, uh, thing out on, uh, in a, like, uh, crimes in America again? The limit of, uh, not crimes. Statue, statue Statues of limitations. of limitations in America on crimes. What crime are you trying to. Well, like assaults? It's like, isn't it like 16 years or something? It's yeah. long. It's sexual assault, I think, that there's no statute of limitations. Well, I mean, they've got footage of him slapping a man, which is clearly yeah, assault. He got just a slap on the wrist. Oh, I want him to go. I want him to Chris suffer Rock the did, consequences. Chris, Chris Rock did press charges. Well, he's a fool. <laughs> Take it to the state. <laughs> the state doesn't have to listen to so, the like, There have been more actors coming out saying that Will Smith is a piece of shit. Yeah. I don't know why they're just dropping it. Yeah, your mate, now. the right wing nut. What was his name? Um, uh, Rob Schneider. Yeah. What makes him a nut, dude? Rob Schneider is a... T- 
His reason the comedic actor. <laughs> <He's just> like, <laughs> <laughs> Rob Schneider is a character. <laughs> South Park, man. When does that one? Oh. It, keeps, it keeps airing these ads yeah. on the plane when they're flying to Scotland, is it? Uh, I can't remember. Rob Schneider is the, <laughs> the guy I used to work with. We used to walk around just randomly passing each other in the house. Rob Schneider is a Yeah. Reasonably, yeah, he's about to find out. <laughs> <laughs> Just go South Park and say South Park. Yeah, <laughs> I'm pretty sure like Kenny's possessed inside of Cartman, and they're flying to Scotland for um, Chef's parents so yeah. they can exercise him. And they're watching like ads on the plane. Rob Schneider was an animal. Then he was a woman. And now, Rob Schneider is a stapler. And he's about to find out that being a stapler is harder than it looks. Rob Schneider is the stapler. Rated PG-13. Rob Schneider is a Wall Street executive with everything going for him. Only problem is, he's about to become a carrot. <laughs> I'm a carrot. It's 24 carat diamonds. Oh, 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 oh. A carrot. Rated PG-13. Rob Schneider. Derpy 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 derp. Until one day, a derp a derp a derp a derp. Derp a derp. The tiddly toe. Oh, 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 oh. From the creators of Derp. And tough to tiddly toe for derp. Rob Schneider is the derp de derp de tiddly derp de derp de derp. Rated PG-13. Ah, uh, uh, that's great. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> yeah, come back to your friend Rob Schneider. Yeah, um, he came. Wasn't it you that sent the? Yeah, the Will Smith video. Yeah, yeah. yeah but who was he having the interview with? It was with. Uh, I oh, it was with uh, Kyle and uh, Jackie. Jackie o. O. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Must have been in town or something. Yeah, I don't know why. Is he promoting anything? He does stand up. Yeah, have you seen it? No, it's, it's pretty crap. Oh, is it? The last one I saw, I think he was just trying too hard not to be woke. Oh, really? There's just, that's the, these idiots try to lean in on, I'm not woke, so I'm going to go the other way. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. But it's not funny. Yeah. Mm. You know what I mean? Like I said, uh, what's his name? Matt Walsh, before he went nuts with his uh, God powers. Sure. What do you mean, man? After after the release of What is a, uh, what is a Woman. What did he say? I'm saying, okay, yeah. Yeah, but I can tell you, come on, you can read his tone, yeah? Just say it. What are you protecting him for? A little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Okay. snarkiness. A little, a little snarky. Yeah. I'm always snarky. Yeah, but the snark is- He yeah. said with a snark. <laughs> <laughs> um, I found Matt Walsh funny yeah. until he started focusing on crap that he thought was going to roll up for more internet, like- uh, Clout, yeah. Yeah. Clout. yeah. Yeah. And then he fell under, what's his name? Yeah, your boyfriend, Ben Shapiro. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> and then all it was was just more and more stupid shit. Oh, entire. <laughs> oh. Matt Walsh, went, <laughs> Matt Walsh went from writing comedy bits to just- But he was always under Ben Shapiro all no, that no, time. He went from writing comedy bits to just leaning in on religious fundamentalism like it made- mm. Like it was going to get him somewhere. Mm-hmm. It's like, dude, you got into the position you are because you were writing comedy, mm. not because you were a zealot. Mm. Like, Leave that to Ben Shapiro. Mm-hmm. He's always been the same. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Kind of. Dude, <laughs> Matt Walsh went as far as justifying mar- uh, child brides and lowering the age of consent. I don't remember hearing that. Oh, but he did. Oh, yeah, but he did. <laughs> I choose not to listen. <laughs> <laughs> he blocks out the bad. You know what I mean? Dude, I, like, seriously, I didn't watch Matt Walsh as much as you think I did. I'm telling you that I went through all of it because I was trying to back catalog. And yet I'm the one that's his friend, and yet he's the one who went through all yeah. of it. He's the one who went through the whole catalog. For someone who claims to not have much time, he has a lot of time. Um, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, he's full of crap have and gacket. Have you guys seen movies lately? You're like, no, I haven't. Have you? Yeah. They're terrible. It's- what? Jerry Seinfeld did a whole bit on- He's got time to go see Seinfeld. It was an hour and a half. Plus he's got an hour and a half. Plus travel. Plus travel. It was food. He lined up. It was, in, it was at Rod Laver. It's literally a 20-minute walk from my house. And it was the whole stadium. It's back. 
<laughs> was it the whole? Was it the whole stadium? I ate dinner and breakfast while I was walking here, yeah, just to save time. Was it the whole stadium? Yeah. Wow, that's pretty cool. Siphon. Yeah, he did a whole bit. Siphon. He did a whole bit <laughs> yeah. on how people get like obsessed with series and shit, right? Yeah. And he's like, and how they go nuts trying to convince you to watch these shows. He's like, Jerry, you've got to see this show. No, you have to see this show. It's the. It's just you have no idea. You need to see it. And then he's like. Now, the first three seasons are kind of crap. Yeah. <laughs> but then it picks but up. Then, <laughs> but then. Uh, yeah. It's the truth. You know what I've been watching? No. Ted Lasso. Who? Ted Lasso. Who's that? I said who, and he's looking at him. It's a TV show. It's on Apple. Who's Ted Lasso? On Apple? Yeah, Apple TV. What do you think this is? <laughs> <laughs> and he says, oh, I've got too much time. Do you, see what, do you see what letter is on this thing? G. It's a G, not an A. Jason, an is it Sudeikis? Jason, Sude- <laughs> Jason, is it Jason Sude- Sudeikis? Sudeikis? Sudeikis. Sudeikis. Yeah. And the premise is ridiculous. He is, in a, it's about a, a British soccer team mm-hmm. and um, the owner loses it to his ex-wife in a divorce settlement. So she hires an American college football coach to come over for the sole reason to make him lose every game and burn it to the ground. As revenge to ex-husband. Is that the one where the coach is abusing the the players? Like, no. When, when they're doing, like, the inspirational talk in the locker room? No. <laughs> and he's like, you're a fat piece of shit. No. No. Because that's, that's the whole thing. He's a coach, but he doesn't actually coach. Hmm. It's just all inspirational quotes. Right. Like, it's just like, you know, like in animes and stuff like that, where, like, you know, it's all about the effort and the teamwork and all that. Uh-huh. But they never actually talk tactics and stuff. Mm-hmm. That's what it's like. It's oh, like so it's just constantly feeding, drip feeding motivational. Yeah, lines, it's just but no. But the motivational is like Southern Texan style, like motivation. Uh huh. And it's just hilarious. Just like the things he's pulling out of his arm. It's it's a good show. It's um, yeah, and all the soccer players that are in there are like counters of actual real players. They have got like a uh, they got like a Beckham. They've got like a. Uh, What's the... I can't even remember their Ronaldo? names. Ronaldo? No, because it's like... They're supposed to be like Man U players. Ah. Yeah. Oh, okay. I see. So, yeah. But it's good. It's a, like a good show. Who would you say is the biggest English soccer player of all time? Of all time? The English? Best. Not the biggest, because you'd have to put Beckham or something there as the biggest. Skill-wise or just like popularity? Skill. skill. I don't know much about English soccer. I was just curious. I was trying to there's explain, lots. There's quite a few. I was trying to explain who George Best was to someone the other day. He was, mm. he was Scottish. Mm. And How George, does he not know who George Best is? I can't remember who it was. You think he would, yeah. Um, oh, I know who it was. It was, it was a friend of mine. And I said that I wanted to get it put on a T-shirt. A picture of George Best. He's got like a bunch of women around him. And his quote is something like, I spent all my money on booze, women, and cars or something. The mm. rest I just squandered. Mm. Like that was the quote. With a picture of like him surrounded by birds, yeah. I was going to put that on a t-shirt. Then I started thinking about English Premier League. Yeah, Who's oh look, the- you could probably say Beckham. There's uh, yeah, but Beckham's the most celebrated. He yeah, but he was, he was very, very good. He player. was a good player. He was a very good player. Okay, uh, you could say he's Roy King British. Who was the chubby dude that uh, R- Wayne Rooney? Yeah. Oh, no, I would say he's the best. He was up there though. It was Shearer. Was- Shearer was pretty good. It just depends. Like, they were just very... Um, but is it fair to say that if you're... Pl- depending on what position you're playing as well, you get more accreditation? Yeah. Well, look... Yeah, you um, stand out. Yeah. Like, strikers generally... Well, if you would. said who would be the best Italian player of all time, who do you think? Me? Yeah. How far back are we going? All time. Look, obviously, I don't know who the players of the 60s and 70s are. Neither would I, but clearly none of them My would be... would be Toddy. See, I disagree. I would say Maldini. Oh, okay. Yeah, hands well, down, hands there. down. Most, one of the most, pretty much the most successful defender of all time. Him and Barese, within a, a span, I think it was like 200 games or 150 games between the two of them when they mm. played together, they conceded in 150 games, I think it was, they conceded 20 goals. But see, that when they played together. With the AFL last week, mm. they were saying who's the better player in the last decade. And it was like Gary Ablett, Dustin Martin, Pontempelli, and... Uh, uh, Patrick Dangerfield. I'd say Ablett. 
I said Ablett, hands down. Mm. Hands down. And then people were saying, oh, but Dusty did this nah. and Dusty did that. I go, nah, man. It wasn't consistent success. But is this stat based or is it? Well, that's what I'm saying. And then someone- That's another, changed. Another mate of yeah. mine Game said- changes. Another mate of mine said that Gary Ablett Sr. was the better player. And I said, yeah, but on paper, Gablett Jr. did way more. Won a brown load. I think yeah. for his position, he's probably one of probably the best full forward. Senior? Yeah. Yeah. Like up there, we, like it was like there's Lockett, him, and Dunstall. That was a, that was the three. Yeah, Dunstall just got elevated to legend status. Yeah. yeah. Something yeah. like that. That's but I'd say, I would, yeah, senior, hands down, probably the best full forward. Lockett, I'd say it'd be very close between them. Yeah, but if you put Lockett and, and senior in the, like, opposite each other, they're mm. totally two different. Yeah, different of course. Players. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Senior was like, looked like it was this degenerate. Dude mm. just was quicker than everyone without training. Mm. Plugger was just the fat cunt full forward. Mm. My mates in Adelaide said that. He goes, gone are the days of the fat cunt full forward like yeah. Plugger. You can't get away with it now. Yeah. You need a full forward that's like like buddy, you know, like versatile, athletic, yeah. strong, blah, 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 that's blah. That's actually a really good point. I didn't think about that. The game's changed. Yeah. But the, the, the over-reliance on full forwards disappeared a long time ago as yeah, well. Yeah, like, the game changed. It just yeah. became a quicker running game. And it game. just became... Yeah, exactly. And it just... It was so easy to just like double team the forward, the full forward, and it was like, well, we'll just keep him goalless. Yeah, but Buddy got his thousand goals in that era when it was changing. Yeah, because he was that. But he was the transition mm. between the big full forward like Dunstall and Plugger mm. to a more athletic. Well, he would go outside fifty. I don't think I ever saw Dunstall go outside fifty. Really? Never. He would never go more than thirty meters out. <laughs> Really? Yeah. The goal square and back. Those are the Check no. his keys, Esky. He's gone for the key. No, no. He's gone for the key. No, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. But that's how it was. Like, those were the days when they would literally just stand in the, f- the back half of the forward line. <laughs> Can you imagine? And just stand there. He's going 60, 50, 40. He's back gone, to 50. He's gone 30. 20. He's, surely he's going to kick it. <laughs> and he's missed. <laughs> Behind. <laughs> <laughs> off, off the woodwork. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I don't know. The game's changed. I thought he had a massive kick on him. He did, but he, no, what I'm saying is he never went he outside never went, of 50. He never went out of the f- 50 to get the 50. ball. Oh, yeah. So he never ventured forward yeah, yeah. to grab He would the ball. try marker maybe at a 45 mm. or 40 and come out and kick on 50 or 55. But he never ventured, yeah, exactly. Yeah, like out. Yeah. But how many times did you see uh, Buddy go out to Buddy like almost scoop, halfway sometimes? Scoop it yeah. up in the middle somewhere yeah. from a clearance and yeah. then just run it down. Yeah. Or mm. even like Carlton, you've got Harry Mackay and Charlie Kerner and they're both alternating between half forward, full forward. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Because mm. they can go out and run and grab and, and deliver. Mm. <laughs> and dance to. <laughs> what a legend, man. Yeah. I don't know. Sports have changed. The oh, whole yeah. changing of the rules and shit. Have you been... Actually, you don't follow it at all, do you? No. I know they've changed rules. Yeah, no. Nah, they've they've done reinterpretations of different rules. Yeah, of course. You're not allowed to touch anyone anymore. It's gotten... Like, it's become a piss tank. Really? Yeah, of course. As someone who goes every week, you see them... Like, now it's like... They tried to come up with a new rule of, like, holding the ball. As in, as soon as you're grabbed, you have literally... 0.5 seconds to get rid of it. How does that work? That's stupid. Yeah, but they were too they were too wishy washy with it as well. So a guy will get dropped, no call. Like, what do you mean no call? You, you called it yesterday. Like, this makes no sense. Uh, this you, is that because the rules are confused or the umpires are confused? Because there's a new president now, isn't there? Yeah. This is this this year the new president or last year? I think last year. This year's umpires are easily the worst, most inconsistent umpires I've seen in the last. Isn't it the years. same umpires though? No. Nah. Every year. It's like they're taking crazy pills. No, what I'm saying is the same umpires consistently every year, but they've got to... No, they do bump people out and bring bump oh, really? ones in. I wonder what it would be like to see that umpire that used to be at the AFL level. Now it's down to, like, grassroots, like, umpiring Clayton versus I'm Oakley. pretty sure once he's out of AFL, he'd probably be retiring. VFL? No, nah, he'd be retiring. What if you're, like, 35, 40? Nah, they get, some of them are old, man. Really? Yeah, it's just, as long as you can keep your fitness up. If your fitness goes, then you can't keep up with hmm. the footy game. Even grassroots, you still got to be fit. Yeah, fair enough. But what I'm saying is, you think they kick them out for bad calls? Ah, uh-huh, like the, the quality of their umpire. Yeah, they're not like they're strikes or something. 
Because, yeah, because they, don't they, um, I know they do it in soccer, like they grade the, the, the refs mm. on like their calls every match. And so then it's kind of like, you know, if they keep it, if they do bad, they kind of drop on the I level. I see that, like a quality scorecard on the And they can only yeah. like ref in like certain divisions, like Division 2 and stuff like <laughs> that. We're sending you to the female league. Please! <laughs> no! I'll be good, I swear! I'll be consistent! Put me in the under 15s! Uh, Talking about sport, female sport. No. Nah. Oops. Hey, this, this is something we've never touched on. My apologies. On. This is new ground. What do, you, know, what do you think of the sudden uptick uh, uh, in the WNBA? What uptick? What uptick? <laughs> <laughs> so apparently there's this new rookie. Yeah, Caitlin uh, Clark. Clark. Yeah. And apparently she's like selling out stadiums now. Yeah, she's... um. But the funny thing is, it's like... Can she's you not be so vigorous on the mic? You're holding it and you're shaking it. Do you hear I this? You. I hate you. I hate you. I'm going to Google this chick while you do this. Yeah. So she's been targeted, like, uh, pretty much singled out by a lot of opposing teams now, but yeah. quite physical uh, bumps and things that in the NBA would be te- technical, just straight up. Yeah. She's not even holding the ball and someone just runs up to him and just smacks her over. So they're saying, like, uh, basically, she's being targeted because it's racism. She's white. And these are a predominantly lesbian league. With predominantly black women. The whole league is lesbian. Like. Yeah. That's so they're that's saying it out of joke. You've got Barkley coming out, and even that Smith dude coming out and say, like, you know, this is this is targeted racism and, like, yeah. basically because she's successful, this is out of jealousy. Because of her specifically, they're saying now they can charter private planes. Why can they charter private planes? Oh, because of her success. Yeah, and it's bringing money in. Yeah, but they're still broke. But the funny thing is, like, <laughs> he's laughing. It's like. <laughs> I'm listening. <laughs> nobody like nobody cared up until this moment until like this started happening and like why is it now all of a sudden like important like who why like the people that weren't talking about it are now talking about it because every have you read any of the comments online regarding to her like I've yeah. heard they say she's a flopper they say dude anyone black is just saying oh there are so many other players that get in, that would be able to like take her out or stand in front of her like in the dream team and la 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 do you know what I mean mm. And it's like, but they really aren't no. because they've done nothing. Yeah, to like even your best black like basketballers in the WNBA are still terrible, mm. terrible. Yeah, okay, like she's obviously doing something to create a highlight. Mm. You know what I mean? I'm Jackson. <laughs> no, but it's like Jackson. it's like Josh Giddy. Back to like dude, Josh Giddy, <laughs> the uh, the Aussie kid. Okay, yeah, the Aussie kid. The yeah, he's young. He's like 19. He's in his third season now, I think, or 20. Or NBA. He's very young. He's like twenty twenty one. Okay, cool. He's a, he's an eight, he's an adult. There was some some crap that came out like this year about him uh, uh, apparently having uh, like a, a relationship or like something to do with like a girl that was underage that got thrown out that apparently killed his like momentum. He had a really shit like last. He just got traded to Chicago, right? From Oklahoma, I think. Oklahoma's crap. Yeah, but. When he came out, they were like, this is the prodigal son of mm. Jesus. Like, mm. this guy is going to kill it. Mm. Smashing it. They said that about uh, Simmons, Simons, whatever his name is. Yeah. He's a flop. He is a flop, yeah. yeah. He's like not even six man now. He's just bench warmer. Comes no, off he's, a, he's fight, a minute. Yeah. But, like, they were talking about Giddy being, like, a gun. Mm. And then now he's just a hack. He yeah. got found out. But, yeah, but he's only in his, like, third season. Like, he's still developing. Like, relax. The NBA is bad in that way because they just – they. They use not yeah. They use you and like they'll, as long as you they can use you, they'll like. Well, on that they'll abuse you basically. I was talking to a mate of mine about it uh, last week because he was talking about the Celtics, right? Mm-hmm. And um, I said, look, man, I go, I can't follow the NBA, not because I've got no interest in the sport anymore, but more of the fact that I tried looking into the teams, tried looking at players, and six weeks later the players have been traded. Mm-hmm. Well, like, yeah, he goes, that's what's happened. You know, now Mavericks. Well, the Mavericks is a good team at the moment because they got. Donkic, Luka Donkic, yeah. Donkic, Luka Donkic. Donk, Donk, he's yeah. a good player. He finally made the finals. They lost, but he's a, he's still a young guy. The dude was like in Europe only like three years ago. Yeah, and he's leading a team now. Irv- Irving is it? Irvine, Irving. Basically, came to the team to try and win a championship. They got to the finals in the I think it's the first year he was there. Yeah. So there's potential there, and that Mavericks are very player loyal too. Yeah, but what I was saying was this was like a couple of weeks ago. We were talking about. Teams that, and then he said 
something about Lonzo Ball. I said something about Lonzo Ball. Mm. And we're talking about the Ball brothers and all that. And he goes, yeah, Lonzo Ball went from Lakers to Chicago. Is he now Charlotte now? He's gone. He's gone from Chicago because he's got lo- two- he hasn't played for two years because of his injury. Yeah. Yeah. Because this- there were a few balls. Yeah, there's three. Yeah. yeah, the one that you're thinking from Charlotte, that's the youngest one. Oh, okay. He's okay. arguably the best one out of them. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. But he, he owns a, a, an NBL team. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, there you go. He came here to play and bought the team. That's hilarious. That's funny. But the point that I'm making is that you can't be lo- you can't be loyal to a franchise that isn't loyal to their players. That's what I mean, oh, exactly. Yeah. So what's the point? 100%. There's, yeah. That's like, and exactly that. Like, you get accused of something, there's... Before it's even like addressed, you've already lost all momentum. You've yeah. gone from the team. You're you're blacklisted. Everything. That's like that dude. I think I've been trying to bring him up for a while now. He's a baseball player in America. He was in America. Trevor Bauer. Have I talked to you about this guy? Uh, Con- consider one of the best pitchers of all time. The dude's a monster. He's playing at the Toledo Mud Hens. He, <laughs> like he in his development, like he was like um, very controversial. Because a lot of, he's a pitcher, so a lot of pitchers develop a specific way, and he chose not to follow the traditional way of developing his arm. He found like- Arm wrestling competitions. He found like this dude, he found like this dude that said it's more about flexibility and stuff like that, and instead of just like normal warm-ups and doing whatever, he started using like this mess, you know, like those tubes that you, you know, those pool tube thingies, those long- Noodles, pool noodles. Oh, yeah, yeah. Something like that, but <laughs> much heavier. And you'd see him in warm-up, like, doing like that with his arm. People are like, what the hell's this idiot doing? Mm. And then instead of, like, throwing short balls, he'd go to the end of the actual field and throw it from, like, center field to home base. Yeah, right. To warm up his arm. Stallone had that in the truck and over the top. Yeah. It was- <laughs> yeah. So this dude was controversial from the start. Mm. He's... He's a he's a internet person, so he's a he's like a net troll, Stop. gamer. Like when he wanted to sign a check, he wanted to be signed for like sixty nine, sixty nine. Like it was all just yeah. like you know forty. What is it for one nine six nine? Whatever what is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like all his everything was just about being like this big kid. <laughs> People hated playing with him, but his results spoke for themselves. Mm. A couple of years ago, he got accused of basically raping a woman, sexual assault, and he's like, I'm innocent. This never happened. He never backed down. He got... The Dodgers had signed him, I think, for, I don't know, like 100 mil, something like that. And they they chose to basically forego the contract and delist him, pretty much their version of delisting. So he went to Japan. And he's playing in Japan now. And while he was in Japan, another one came out saying that he had sexually assaulted her as well. All the, like, everything showed that there had been, like, sex, like there had been activity there. But he was, like, straight from the get like, like the get-go, this is crap. I never touched them in this way that they're saying. The roughness was was consensual, all this. He's got a ball gag in his suitcase as he travels the country. Finally, <laughs> like four years after the fact, four years after the fact, he finally was able to, like, leak the conversations and everything. Why four years later? I think he was under, like, a gag order or something because he was still in court. The first Not one had the one been. That he carries his you, I was going to say you were spot on. <laughs> the first one had been thrown out of court actually because they couldn't find anything. The second one, I think, it was still in the process. Pretty much, this dude's career was ruined mm. because there's footy, there's actual SMS messages between the first one and her friends saying that this dude's rich. I'm going to try and take him for oh, all this guy. Yeah, story, like yeah. it was planned. Um, there's footage of her just after they've done it, and she's like, "Fine, nothing." But then the next day, she's all bruised up. And it's like, well, you she did it to yourself in the face. Exactly. And then the second one as well was the exact same thing. Like, she had accused him of sexual assault. And he had the footage as well of her basically, like, talking crap. So, this whole dude's career has been ruined because they were after the pay. That's normal. But his whole career in that sense was destroyed from the uh, major, the baseball league, MLB. So, where's he now, Japan? He's in Japan now. He won't play again in America. They don't, he's too... Too controversial. Even though he's been cleared, he's like... He's controversial or it's tainted? It's tainted, but he's a controversial player because he... Um, something about, like, he purposefully... So, he said that every pitcher in the baseball league manipulate the ball. Yeah, that's why they use the Vaseline and yeah. all that stuff. But there's a rule against it, and it's a pretty severe ban yeah. if you get caught for it. So, he purposefully went out and said, I'm going to pitch above this speed. 
and he, every single pitch was done that way because then he, after the match, he came out and said, I was manipulating the ball with Vaseline and stuff like that. Tar, I think it was. Yeah, there's or different grips stuff. or something. Yeah. And he goes, everybody's doing it, but the, like the league refuses to do something about it. So that was controversial. Like he was bringing their faults to the limelight, mm. the main public. So they didn't like that. He would never go along with his like teammates. They always had something against him. So I'm just saying that along the lines of like even in baseball, like the same thing. You get tarnished ah. before you even get to defend yourself. They want nothing to do with you. You lose all momentum. 